Yo, people always ask me what kind of frames I'm rocking. I've been rocking Caddis for a couple of years. They make amazing progressive readers, which I wear. Also, they make sunglass readers, anti-glare, anti-smudge coating, anti-scratch, and anti-aging. That's why I look mad young when I wear them. I'm just kidding. Um, but they make amazing frames. Caddis, so stoked to have you guys part of the podcast. You can go to caddislife.com slash Toby10 and get $10 off your first purchase. Stoked. Thank you, Caddis. Welcome to the fam. Yo, yo, Liquid Death. Thank you so much for hydrating all my guests taking care of me and my family and my friends. Love your water. Love your brand. Love what you stand for. Love you. Give back to the community. If you want to learn more about Liquid Death and how it started, listen to episode 115 with the co-founder, owner, and creator of Liquid Death, Mike Cesario. Just a punk rock skateboarding kid from Delaware with a dream. It's an incredible story, incredible journey. They have now blessed me with my own code. So if you go liquiddeath.com slash Toby, you get free shipping on any items you order from liquiddeath.com. Thank you so much, Liquid Death. Death to plastic, murder your thirst, stay hydrated. You know H2O saves lives. <clears throat> Microphone check, check, check. Welcome to the One Life, One Chance podcast. I'm your host, Toby Morse. If my voice sounds weird or strange, I just came for the dentist and I feel like I'm talking crazy, but I'm not. Um, to the right of me, I have my man Chappelle Lacey in the house. Yeah. Um, who's here? My friend Derek, who's always with me as of late, is in Paris and Berlin. He's coming back soon. We miss you, Derek. Yeah, miss you, Derek. Chappelle Lacey's holding it down. Thanks for being yeah, here. I hope I, I hope I'm doing him justice. And then, my friend, I'm really psyched you're here, and uh, we've been talking about coming on for a while, and it's been a crazy world with uh, lockdowns and all kinds of shit, Mr. Brady. Mr. Braden Safransky. Hey, how's it going? I said it right. I said, I said yeah. Braden. Brady. Braden Safransky. Brady. I should have said Braden. I'm sorry. So Braden Safransky. I feel like when I'm talking, I'm not saying what I'm really talking. It's strange. I feel like I'm talking like I sound crazy. So I I, I, I was so nervous about your name, Safransky, because of the way it's spelled. Because on your Instagram, and usually it's like SZA. We were just yeah. talking about that a few minutes ago. You're the OG SZA. And, um, <laughs> OG SZA, yes. But yeah, so Polish. Awesome. Yep. I never knew that. Yeah, I I don't know my exact heritage. I just know that like when they did one of those ancestral things oh, or whatever, yeah. that it's like a shit ton of German in me okay. from both sides, and then somehow somebody fled and they all ran to Poland, <laughs> and then we were Polish from then on. <laughs> <Sick>. Awesome. <laughs> you never did the twenty three in me. What's that? Twenty three. I haven't done it now. Okay. I mean, I want to because I wanted to actually figure out what. Because I don't have any grandparents or yeah. anybody to talk to about any of that kind of stuff. So yeah, I don't know where. Uh, like my grandpa, on my dad's side died when I was a kid. So okay, and then my mom's side, he was just like born, I think, in Las Vegas or something, or moved there in like 1914. Wow. Wow. So and that became a city in like 1904. So okay, we're just Vegas as long yeah. as I can remember. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, you. I think you're the first guest I've ever had who was born and raised in Vegas. It's pretty amazing. Fuck yeah. I think I, I'm we'll pretty sure of them, man, because everybody yeah. goes there. Everybody's always traveling, going through Vegas, but you don't meet that many people uh, from Vegas. You know, you know Ronald's Donuts? Why does that sound familiar? It's a, it's a donut spot off the beaten path in Vegas and has a whole vegan selection. Is it? Yeah, it's I like think. A, is it uh, right by Fremont Street? It might be. It's like off the bin. It's like off the, off you the know, strip. Off the strip. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's an old school spot, but they have a duplicate. A uh, case of donuts that are exactly like the original ones, but there's a vegan option. It's amazing. It's like a secret treasure. We always go and we go there. Nice. It's like the, a yeah. Haven. I'm gonna have to look that up. Ronald's Donuts. <laughs> Ronald's donuts <yeah. laughs> um, it's so gonna be like right next to my mom's house, and I just never oh, noticed yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a strip mall. It's just super basic. But just it's Ronald's. away away from the strip. Yeah. No, it's in the strip mall, like a little strip mall area, not the strip. The strip mall, like classic, like a little like. Yeah. Corner, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's probably actually on the east side of town where everything's a little bit older. Yeah, and there's yeah, a yeah. lot bigger, older strip malls, and there's like Summer of Siam, not Summer. I mean, uh, Lotus of Siam, like okay. old restaurants like that that have won so many awards. But if you're not from there and you don't watch Food Network shows, you wouldn't ever <laughs> know. It's just like, oh, let's just go down over here and take a left into this hoodie street and down this yeah. street, and then boom, yeah. here it is—the most famous restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Vegas is so interesting because I don't know. There's, there is so many cool things about Vegas, and I've only I've only seen the, just the main things when I go there and play there. You know, punk rock bowling mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and just walking ever. the strip. Yeah, and the strip and just that. But there's so much other things. So, what was it like growing up there in Vegas? You know, 
I thought it was completely normal until I actually moved away from Vegas. And then I realized <laughs> that like, oh, okay, the shit we did as kids was not normal. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that was just our normal. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny that you say that my girlfriend's from Vegas. She literally says that exact same thing. Really? She's from Vegas? Exa- exa- well, I mean, exactly. When we were, when we were like said. kids, you know, I've been in bars since I was like three years old yeah. and whatever, wow. or my dad would be gambling, smoke everywhere. And with me and my brothers would be sitting in a booth and they'd just like every hour or two, just can you send them over some ice cream or some whatever? <laughs> like, so, you know, the things that we just thought were completely normal, just being in a restaurant, everyone smoking crazy yeah. shootouts, crazy, whatever, like, drugs hookers on every corner of every mm-hmm. you know and things like that on the strip and you just you didn't i thought that was normal and like yeah always doing dumb things to tourists and just running amok and then you kind of came to california and then you came to other places and you're like oh people aren't like that <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't they don't act like that they think that we're crazy <laughs> yeah. yeah we weren't doing anything crazy we were just doing with like the product of what we've seen every day yeah the yeah. environment so you have brothers and sisters yeah well, I have a, a half sister and then okay. two brothers. And so, uh, were your parents pretty strict growing up? Um, yeah, my mom was crazy strict. Um, I mean, I don't really know. I mean, she just she tried to raise us Mormon because she thought that was the right thing to do. Wow. And me and my little brother knew what that we didn't care. And as we got older, she also didn't care too after we all turned 18 she was like i don't know i just thought it was like something that you did yeah. to like to, <laughs> but then my older brother he took it extremely serious oh, okay and then my dad yeah. he was like a not i i can't even explain it. he was he smoked weed his whole life he did everything he was a hustler he was craziness and whatever but then he'd be like you can't go to a rock and roll show crazy shit happens at those wow you know really? what i mean like he would be like weirded out but then at the same time, he'd be like in a street fight and then doing some other shit and be wow. like drunk as hell. And so I don't really know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. who was strict and who wasn't. It was kind of my mom was more shadowing. That's for sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. And my dad didn't really give a shit what we did. He just didn't want us like he just for some reason thought. And he still until he died was like, you should not travel anymore. You know, the it's not safe out there in the world. And, wow. and you know, he was just like weird uh-huh. kind of, I don't even know. Was he you scared know of the world? He was paranoid. That's okay, what paranoid. it was. I yeah. think he okay. smoked too much weed. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just paranoid. Shouldn't, shouldn't leave the house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But he didn't care what else he did. He just was paranoid. <laughs> wow. So you guys are out in the street. Were you rebellious against like your mom being like that? Trying to make you be uh, more and stuff? Or? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I remember when I was uh, a little kid. I went to my bishop and I told him I was gay because I knew that that was the only way to get kicked out of the religion. (laughs) And they started laughing and they were like, we know that you're not gay. Do you really want out of the religion that bad? And I was like, yeah, this isn't for me. And they were like, they're like, it's cool. You know, you're always allowed to sit in the back and do whatever. We know that like, you know, it's not for everybody, but we respect you for being brave enough to like trying to get out. (laughs) That's hilarious. That's amazing. Wait, so did you grow up around a lot of Mormons then? Uh, I mean, Vegas is the second capital, I think, of the world. I yeah. Know, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Arizona. Yeah. I grew up around a, a, a yeah, ton. Yeah, it's, it's, well, I mean, Utah is connected to us. So yeah. It's, yeah. They all just go right mm-hmm. to the closest thing. But Vegas is like tons and tons of Mormons. Wow. I, didn't even know I mean, I, I have respect for all of them. I'm just. Yeah. It just wasn't for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so how were you in school? Uh, I don't know. Pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you graduate? No. Wow. Well, you like you were skating. You started skating early, right? Yeah, I started skating early, and then uh, I think when I was eleven, my parents brought me out to California, and I was just started skating. I remember going to uh, Huntington and Newport and L.A. and going, "Why are you taking me back to Vegas?" Like, mm. I made my mind up. This is what I'm going to do with my life. I'm going to move to California. I'm going to be a pro skateboarder. Wow! And I knew it forever and ever. And I remember. I was uh, one of the oldest in my class. School started like September 24th or something like that. And yeah. and I would have, I turned uh, 18, would have been October 3rd of my senior year, like two weeks in. Yeah. And I kind of gave him this ultimatum like when I was 17 and a half or something. Where I was like, either you're going to hold me here 
And when I turn 18, I'm going to leave that day anyways. And I'm going to go to California and fulfill my dream. Or you're going to let me go now. And I'm going to go to California and fulfill my dream. And so <laughs> they let me leave at 17. And wow. so I just came out to LA and thought, I made it to Venice Beach. This is the Mecca. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. And so I convinced my mom that. I had a friend that I was staying with, but I was really just sleeping in the car for like eight, nine months. Wow. Man. And I was, I remember getting stopped by cops a few times in the middle of the night, them knocking on my window and they're like, are you a runaway? Are you this? And I'm like, no, my friend actually lives right there. I just, his mom's being mad at me, so I can't come in the house. Ooh, and they're like, and they're like well, you can't sleep on the streets. And I'm like, I'm not homeless. I'm not anything. I'm literally just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just staying because I'm waiting for them to wake up and I'm going to, we're all going to go skate. Wow. Nobody was there. That was just making up houses. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. That's good, man. That's some dope, street, some streetwise shit. I mean, I got away with it. So, and is it true that like your neighbor, like your neighbor's uh, brother was in jail, and and his sister gave you yeah. a skateboard when you're like 11 years old or something? Yeah, that was uh, this girl Ariana. I've known her. She was the first person I think I ever met. Um, we met when we were three in printing in kindergarten or preschool wow. or something like that, and she was like four houses down. And we're still very, very, very That's close cool. friends. And uh, she, her brother went to jail for some random, I don't even remember what it was. Yeah. But my brother skateboarded and she knew I wanted a board. And for my 11th bir- or my 12th birthday, but she gave it to me like six months earlier. She was like, hey, I got you this like as a birthday present. And that was my first board. That's fucking I awesome. S- I don't even care. I still remember it was like Venture Trucks, a slick Powell Peralta. Nice. Uh <laughs> some wheels that were like bright yellow because they've been sitting in the sun for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and so you just started skating and did you find other kids that were skating? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we didn't really have skate parks back then. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it was just a random little click of my brother's friends. And then I kind of met through yeah. people through that. And I got lucky because my older brother was a construction worker. My dad was a carpenter and built hotels and everything. So that he would, and he didn't want us leaving the yard. So he built fucking a bunch of ramps and Sick. everything. And we didn't have a skate park. So it'd be like Kenny Anderson and all these older pro skaters would come over to our house and they called it the skate house. Wow. So I got That's lucky amazing. to like Sick. just sit around and just watch all the older guys. And I kind of met a crew and a bunch of people through that. And then I kept getting kicked out of school. So eventually they were like, we have to homeschool you because you can't go to any more opportunity schools and wow. this and that, which was kind of a blessing because I'd wake up at six, seven in the morning, finish my schoolwork by 10, 30 or 11. Scary. And then I would just have, you know, for a 13 or 12 year old or whatever, you have unlimited energy. Don't <laughs> yeah. matter who's there. And you would just skate for 10 hours a day wow. in your yard. And I would watch them come over at night and skate for an hour. And then when they'd leave the next day, whatever they did, I was like, I got to learn this kind of stuff. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Man. So by the time they get back, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember your first trick you learned? Uh, it's just an ollie like everybody. Well, once you get that ollie though, man, it's fucking it feels magical. Yeah. When you first land that. I think, but once you actually do, because I, I see kids who can ollie. I mean, most people can figure that one out. Once you land your first kickflip, mm-hmm. you either make up your decision right then it's your kick flip or your first heel flip. It's yeah. literally your decision right then of I'm either doing this for the rest of my life or <laughs> we're, we're, that hurt way too much and we're yep. done. But yeah. most people get that like, fuck, yeah, that that rush of I can't believe I just worked so hard and that board flipped under my feet and now I'm standing on it again. Yeah. Holy shit. So were your parents supportive about you going to Cali? They, they had no choice because you're 18. No, uh, they were supportive because by that point, like Kenny Anderson and all them have like – taken me under their wing for so many years and they were like well definitely he's gonna be something big wow and we're gonna make sure that he has all the right connections and right everything and so they always knew that like it's cool he's gonna go there anyways we might as yeah. well let him do his dream so what, what were you doing you got it? did you start working did you start working jobs when you got here or you just kind of just no like- I fucking didn't care if I had a goddamn dollar in my name. I was skating. <laughs> that was it. Like He's crashing in people's houses well, I got, in the streets. Or... I got lucky because when I was like 15 or 16, Kenny told me, uh, you never have to get uh, worry about boards again. I'll take care of you on boards and wheels. Damn. And so he would give me like four boards a month. And 
I could sell two of them, ride two of them for the month. And that was 40 bucks. And, you know, I didn't give a shit. I'll eat ramen noodle back then. And I had, <laughs> and I had, I had, uh, El Pollo Loco back then. It was the BRC burrito, which is bean, cheese and rice. And that was 99 cents. Oh, you're chilling. So I can get two of those a day. And then a ramen noodle, and I had enough energy to do whatever the fuck I wanted throughout the day, you know what I mean? You found your way. And we were also, you know, little asshole kids. There was a couple of my friends that moved out around the same time. Yeah. And they actually had a house. And sometimes, not proud of it, but sometimes we would go to, like, Vaughn's, fill up a whole shopping cart, and just push the shopping cart right outside the front door. And nobody ever chased us. I swear we did it, like, five times. And, like, I remember we'd get to the car, and we're like... Throwing things in, going, is this for real right now? We have like full chickens, and (laughs) (laughs) that's crazy. Meanwhile, the the food had no bags. Yeah, no, no bags, nothing. Nobody even noticed. (laughs) I mean, I guess if you just act like you own the place, nobody pays attention to you. Yeah, oh, that's right, no bags. Yeah, Yeah. no bags. (laughs) Think about it. (laughs) Damn, that's crazy. Get away with that. Wow. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, it's not. I don't steal or do any of that bullshit anymore. But that was definitely like when (laughs) you're surviving, though. When you were starving, and you were like. I mean, there was starving, and then there was also like, okay, who grabbed the fucking six box of Gushers? And you're yeah. like, that's not really starving. We just, okay, you just wanted some candy, too. <laughs> and then wow. you're being eco-friendly by not getting bags. Yeah, exactly. Way, way before we're, it was we're, being, we're being smart. Yeah. Way before it was cool. Way before. Trying um, to save the ocean way back then. <laughs> so you just started street skating and just all that, and then like, how long was how long was the time frame between like moving to California and getting like your first sponsor? Okay, so I moved in January, February, March. It would have been March fourth. I don't know how I remember these. I remember because I was just so I can't believe that my parents left uh, on a trip, and I was supposed to be there for another until like summer. And I remember that day I was like, "They're gone, We're fucking out." And so it was like March fourth. <laughs> And that was in 2000. 2000. Then, so this would have been, I guess it was a lot longer than eight months that I was, I was doing what I was doing because it was 9-11. On 9-11, wow. my board broke uh, and I was going to Melrose where I knew that there was a skate shop and I didn't know about anything else. I just knew there was this random skate shop. So I was going down Melrose, me and my friend Eric, and there was this Cadillac driving down the street, honking the horn with an American flag being held out the window. And he's screaming, America, fucking America. And we were like, that was Chad Muska. Holy shit. Wow. And, <laughs> and, and, and so I went and bought this board. And then right then I was walking back towards the car and Chad was skating down the street. And I knew he was from Vegas and we stopped him and we were mm. like, hey, we have some mutual friends, you know, Travis and this and that. And he was like. Oh yeah, I'm actually going to this shop, Brooklyn Projects. It's right here, wow, and dumb. we didn't and we didn't know about Brooklyn Projects, so we went to some random little shop. So we walk into Brooklyn Projects, and Chad was like, "Oh, you're from Vegas? Do you have a video?" And you know, me being a little ass kid, I was like, "Bam!" <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like, Big ass VHS, in yeah, your pocket. Was straight up VHS, just pulled it right out, and they were like, "And uh, Dom, I just met Dom ten seconds earlier, and Dom had a TV there, and he put it in." And the first trick was a backsmith down this Beverly 12. And Chad just pressed pause. And he goes, turns around and goes, do you have any sponsors? I go, no. He goes, okay, you're on Shorties, Circa, Ghetto Child, this. And went down every sponsor he had. And he's like, and where are you living? I was like, um, under this big tree in Venice Beach. Wow, and dude. he was like, no, nah, you can come stay with me. And here's a bunch of, you guys smoke weed, right? And like gave us weed and whatever. And the Dom right away was like, you ride for Brooklyn Projects. You're part of us forever. And <laughs> That's so, fucking amazing. Literally, like, so whenever people bring up 9 11, I'm always like, yeah, it was a really tragic and it was a fucked up bad time. But for me, it was the beginning of everything I ever worked for in my yeah, whole life. That's so that's crazy. That's crazy. Because that's all I think about on that day. I don't think about other things happening no. in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Meanwhile, it was a different world for you. Yeah. And just that moment, that time, like, what if you weren't going down Murrows? What if you didn't run into Musk? Just, yeah. All that. I mean, it's am- amazing, you know, man. Muska holding an American flag out the window, <laughs> screaming, and like then skating down the street with an American flag around his back and like holding it up. And wow, dude! So, so that was it. That's the beginning right there. That was so every like it's weird how Muska. I actually have a timeline of my everything just because that date. You know what I mean? Yeah. That I can actually tell you exactly when my whole life changed was nine eleven two thousand one. And so he took you in Muska. 
Yeah. Shout just, out to Muskin, man, by the way. Straight up. He was in the pod, too, but he's not from Vegas. He was from Ohio, I think. Yeah, he's from Ohio. Then he lived when he was Ohio. a kid, he moved to Arizona and then yeah. moved to Vegas before he moved to San okay. Diego or whatever the fuck it was in California. Well, I'm going to correct myself. You're the original from Born and Raised in Vegas, though. I just thought about that. Kenny Anderson. He, he Kenny Anderson. That's oh, right. yeah. I'm yeah. saying on the pod, though. Oh, okay, I'm going to get okay. Kenny oh, on, though, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Kenny's sick with his like, amazing vegan skate shoes and shit. He's a... Just all around amazing human being. I heard, Probably I heard one of the things. nicest guys that you'll ever meet in your life. Yeah. And yes, he's Sweetheart. organically grows everything I he know, eats I and know. he just cares about everyone and the whole planet. And fucking, I remember being in his car as a kid and someone threw back then. S- yeah, this is like back in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. And someone threw something out his window and he, fu- and I've never seen this dude mad ever. And he fucking slammed on his brakes, turned around and was like, about to slap the dude and was like, get the fuck out of the car. Go pick that up. Now pick up two other pieces of trash. Wow. Throw that shit away. Do ever fucking litter out of my car. Don't ever even litter around me again. And I was like, damn, what a, what a solid dude. <laughs> damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, that's amazing, yeah. man. Yeah. I definitely get him on. Um, all right. So now you're sponsored by all these companies and that really happens. Like it all comes. No, you didn't just say it, it happened. You get sponsored by all these companies. You live in Muska. Yeah. Right? It's, it's definitely like started. Introducing me to celebrities and people, and next thing you know, I'm like with Paris Hilton and all these oh, other that's people. Right. I'm like, yeah, this is your girlfriend? What the fuck is going on? We dated Paris back then. Yeah, that's right, man. We talked about it. that's right. Then you're right now. You're in the mix, bro. Yeah, like went from like holy shit to holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> you're living under a tree, then you're living up in the hills. Yeah. And how old are you then? 18. Yeah, just uh, turned 18, Jesus, bro. Yeah. And then what? So then you start entering contests in Cali. No, I, I just. I never really was a contest skater. And then I just mm. started uh, skating. And one day was right here, right up the street from your house. And uh, I remember we weren't staying at Chad's house for a little bit. He had some, we, he was just letting us stay sporadically. And yeah. we had other houses that we'd go to. And I ran to this other kid and he was like, I just moved to LA. You can move into my house or come over and stay, stay a night or two. And we were there for like an hour. And all of a sudden, the door gets kicked in and it's train wreck, Andrew Reynolds, Eric Ellington and all them. And they're like, we just got kicked out of our house for they just the <laughs> landlord just threw them out because they were just too fucking gnarly. wild. Yeah. And they were like, we're staying here because it was a bootleg house. So he was they were paying the rent. Mm. It was under his company. So he was like, this is my I'm taking uh, over the room. Uh, wow. And I stayed the first night. We stayed up all night drinking, smoking, partying, whatever. And we went to bed, you know, the whole time. I'm just a little fan still of everybody. Like, yeah. oh, shit, this is crazy. And the next day we woke up and Andrew just looked at me and he was like, where are you sleeping tonight? And I was like, I don't know. And he's like, you don't have to leave. And then around four or five nights, he was like, no, you're with me from now on. Wow. And then that following Christmas or New Year's Eve, like on a couple of days after New Year's, he just came up to me and goes, "Do you? here's the option. You can be Am for Baker right now, or you can call it Muska and be on flow for shorties and see where that takes you. And I called Chad and I was like, Chad, I got to quit. <laughs> 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 and he was mad. Uh, he oh, was really? so mad at me. And then, you know, over the years, he finally, you know, came up to me and was like, you did what you had to do, man. So it was I, a couple I love years you. of not talking and stuff like that? Or no, no, we talked, okay. but he was, you could just feel the animosity. He was just kind of bitter about it Damn. and then he came up to me and then this is after shorties and everything went out of business and he was like you did the best thing dude you did what you had to do for your career you got where you needed to be and you took responsibility for yourself and i don't know why i was mad i think i was just hurt because i wanted you to be the dude that wrote for us and yeah. nobody's ever quit any of my stuff and i'm like i Damn. get it dude you got that cool ego you know you're the dude yeah like, yeah, yeah, yeah but wow. yeah so we've been very, very close friends ever since. He's do one you, of my idols. Oh, do, yeah, he's uh, a bastard. Do you and like because uh, I, I mean I I know who you are. I'm skateboarding and all that stuff. And I, I do. Do you feel like you know? Because I think yeah, that I honestly think that was a better decision. Because I think when I watch you skate and stuff like that, like you you have that Baker it's, feel it's, to that's it. That's what I also thought, you know? and that's what Chad eventually came mm-hmm. and told me too. He was like, you know, we were more of a fresh this and you were more hesh and crazy you know? yeah like, yeah that's what i'm saying i'm like i'm like you you fit baker yeah you know what like, I mean? you know you just literally were a baker it was kind of perfect for what happened and and it just kind of was history from there yeah now i 
run my own empires. <laughs> that's cr- I know. So you've been sk- you've been sponsored and skating ever since that. Yeah, like that's when you're full time. That's your that's your main I mean, thing. I just turned 38 in October. It's my main thing, and it always will be. I'm going to be a skater forever. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm going to do whatever. But you can't just like anybody do. Thing. Yeah, you have to do everything. And for me, my mind moves too fast and too hyperactive and crazy that yeah. I don't want to just be one thing. I love skating. I'll skate any day, anywhere with anybody. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yes, I fucking love to be in front of cameras. I love acting. I love uh, right after this, I have to go do a tattoo. That's yeah. what I've been doing lately is awesome. I, I love tattooing. I love like painting. I love like, you know, being part of so many different worlds, creative, you know, yeah, I don't yeah. have to, you get to a certain age where you're like, I want to do everything. Yeah. I don't want to just do, of course, at, 15, 16, 19, 20, you couldn't even get me to like go to the fucking desert or something for, to <laughs> yeah. go with, with a girl. Cause I'd be like, you're taking away hours of skating. Right yeah. Now. <laughs> what am I going to do out here? What? We're going to have sex. I could do that at home. <laughs> like, uh, I got to go skating. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so every, so every single day that, that was it. Yeah. And like, that was your main thing. No, no other jobs at that point. Right. Just strictly no, just skating I, until, re- you, until yeah, recently I didn't ever have a real job i mean skateboarding is a real job because i broke every bone and killed myself and did everything (laughs) that i possibly could for it yeah Mm -hmm. but i've never like had to clock in somewhere and Mm. tell somebody like and have a boss sit there and tell me you didn't treat this fucking customer right and you know and of course yeah and then after that i went into tattooing and i own a sunglass company and i own uh ghetto child wheels with some partners and some other things so Awesome. There is no clocking in, you know. I can go down to happy hour shades at any time. Yeah. And I don't have to show up for two months. The it's ran <laughs> yeah. by amazing people and it it's does awesome. what it needs to do. And then, you know, when I show up, everybody's like, Woo, let's have a barbecue. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and let's do fucking or I'm in there talking to the accountants and yeah. whatever else goes with that, you know. So and then tattooing is like just I have a tattoo after this. I was supposed to do it at five. I called the girl and said, Hey, I can't do it till seven. She was like, sounds good. Thank you. There's man. no like clocking in. No, <laughs> you know, know what I mean? Know, yeah. If anything, the person that I'm, I work for his tattoo shops, like you have a key. I don't care what time you tattoo. As long as you put your rent in the fucking box, everything's good. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're pretty mobile with it too. I see you traveling around tattooing and stuff like that. Right. Well, that was just because, the pandemic stuff yeah and we're not yeah, supposed yeah. to talk about that yeah, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry oh. no no i mean every tattoo artist in the world did it everybody I know, but dude, I know. legally <laughs> you're supposed to be in a shop that's yeah <laughs> and yeah but we're all safe and everybody did everything yeah. sanitary and, yeah and this and that and you know made sure that our whole area was perfect and every the whole but yeah, yeah technically you're supposed to be in an actual tattoo shop and since the pandemic's ended nobody's i don't see people doing house calls you know what i mean like no no and i've been asked by a lot of different shops actually around the world which now that we're out of the pandemic this next summer i want to do i got asked by a shop in paris to do it's cool uh come out yeah yeah, guest spot for a week i got offered in berlin copenhagen uh london this shop in New Mexico, my friend's shop in New York, so and then my cool. other friend's shop in uh, Australia. And I was like, you know what? Tattoo tour. This sounds kind of fun. Like, yeah. I can go out there. They'll either pay for my flight or I pay for my flight. I can bring my girlfriend or whoever. And you're like, cool. I'll book all my tattoos in three days. Yeah. We'll make it a, a nine-day trip. Work for three days doing something I already love to do. Yep. And then... Afterwards, you get a vacation with all of your friends and then, skate you know, anything, yeah, yeah, skate, do whatever. And then you come home and you made money for being there. It's so you're good. Like, oh, this you got to is... do it, man. Yeah. And I'd love just to like I was out in Long Beach the other day and I ran into a kid that at the park that uh, he was from Canada. And I remember during the pandemic, he just happened to be in Vegas and I uh, did a tattoo on him oh, shit. and I ran into him and he like pulled up his sleeve and it was beautiful how it came nice. out like a year later. And I was like, wow, that's, that's a warm, weird feeling to see a kid that lives in Canada. Yeah. And he has a piece of your art on him for the rest of his life. You Fucking know what I mean? Amazing. Like yeah. something that you drew. So, did you, what was your first tattoo on yourself? Like your first tattoo you got and how old were you? 
Oh, my first one was this one, Sick. and that was when I was 18, the skateboarder. And that was, I wanted tattoos my whole life, and my mom always said that if I did, she would burn it off of me. Damn. And so on my 18th birthday, my dad took me to get this. And he's like, well, your mom can't sue me anymore. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and so I ended up getting that one. And I'm thankful for my mom because uh -huh. if it wasn't for her, I'd probably literally have like oh, no. the misfit skull this big, you yeah. know what I mean? And, like my whole entire chest and be <laughs> yeah. like, and have like dumb friends that have covered everything of just stupid, stupid know, tattoos. Yeah. And then luckily enough for me, I waited that time and I got to grow up with like Wu, Dr. Wu and Sick. Andrew the Kid and, and all these great tattoo artists were all my tattoos. I'm like, cool. I, they're not shit. So, yeah. And, and I get to say like, I have tattoos like these and a bunch of fun ones from like Wu and all them when they were like apprenticing. Just coming up. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's things awesome. that if you get this, you tell people that that's from them. They're like, no, it's not. I know his style. And you're like, yeah, 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 but I've gotten originals. Like, yeah. <laughs> so were you, were you doing art too as a kid? I mean, I just, Drawing always, and shit I or? would just draw, but I would mainly get like frustrated because you would be sitting in a bus or a van next to like Spanky and all these people who are fucking insane artists and you'd start drawing something really stupid and then they would draw something like fucking, <laughs> I mean, like it would be like, it should be in a, uh, museum somewhere yeah yeah and you're just going crumple up this paper <laughs> throw it away i don't fucking care anymore i'm just gonna sit here and, <laughs> but, <laughs> and so do you start practicing on yourself do you, is it true people practice on yes. like fruit and shit like that or i have no clue okay you i see, mean you did people I got, first i got really 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 lucky yes i have uh about four or five on my leg yeah. from me trying to learn just ho how to hold it and everything yeah Every tattoo artist has the top part of their leg Thought from, yeah, 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 where they tried to figure it out. But I got lucky. The people I apprenticed to, everybody was like, you've gotten insanely lucky because you had a fan base. You got to do tattoos because most people, you know, I apprenticed for a year and I still, I mean, I don't give a shit what people say. I'll apprentice my whole life. Yeah. It's just like skateboarding. I'm still going to ask every skateboarder. I've been doing it for 27 years. Hey, how'd you do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I How, love that, man. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I, I want to learn every day. Yeah. So I'm always going to ask questions. Um, but I got lucky because I just said, Hey, I'm tattooing and a million fans stuck up their hand and were like, I don't care if it's fucking garbage. I will <laughs> take it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I would do it with, uh, the dudes I was apprenticing to yeah. standing right next to me. And they'd be like, no, don't hold the needle like this. Don't do that. Don't like, you know, and, this is how deep it needs to go. This is what, yeah, yeah. and don't break the skin R rather do it light and go darker than go darker and try to figure out light. You can <laughs> yeah. bleed them out and this. And so I kind of got really lucky because the people I've talked to the tattoo, they spent years doing apprenticing and yeah. then they were getting one person who would allow them to tattoo them a month for like another two or three years Wow! because they were like, nobody wanted a tattoo from somebody who doesn't tattoo yet. Yeah. 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 I just had, and especially during the pandemic. Yeah. People had fucking, and I wasn't even really charging people, but people were getting them stimulus checks and they were getting unemployment yeah. and they were like, what do you need? A hundred dollars? Here you go. And I was like, woo. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I get to draw on you for a hundred dollars. Like, this is great. It's amazing. How many tattoos have you done? Now I'm probably done like three or 400. Wow. Dude. Man, yeah. And that's only been in a couple of years. Like, wow. During the pandemic, I, fucking because i the only reason i know this is because i got one of those big buckets for your uh cartridges and your needles okay yeah and i filled up a couple of those buckets and i'm like wow. i usually use like one maybe two if it's a massive tattoo yeah, yeah, yeah you know what i mean to do a different type of shading or something and i filled up two of those things and i was like there's gotta be hundreds of fucking, fucking needles in here and cartridges damn i've done a lot more than i thought like wow man so would you open up a shop somewhere? I would love to. I'd love to partner up with uh, my friend that I work for now, night school in Venice Beach. Okay. He, uh, this kid, Joey Hill, he's amazing. But it's a different style than like what you have and what yeah, I yeah. have. He's more, I, I don't even, it's, if you look at his Instagram, everything, it's all 
day long models. I think I've seen him tattoo. He ta- does like seven to 10 tattoos a day. Okay. Which wow. is insane. And yeah, he literally, it's like a line of women all day long. Is it like writing in small things? Cause and- he's single needle yes. and it's so fucking perfect and yeah. on point and like That's fine line mm-hmm. that, and like, yeah, he gets like girls that want like the word love, but yeah. it's so small and the perfect it's cursive yeah. and like, or this is a butterfly that's this big somehow that you can't even see it, but it's, it's absolutely perfect. And like, it's and, black and gray. Yeah. And he can do any color. He can do anything, but he just, and so it's, it's crazy how many fucking people he tattoos every wow. day. And it's very rare that I see a guy come to him. It's just women. And it's every type of woman from like huge celebrities. I see walk in there yeah, all the way down to people who came all the way from Europe. And they found him and they're like, yeah, I booked an appointment three months ago. Jesus, man. Uh, and I came out here yeah. from fucking Germany or something. Yeah. And I'm like, for Joey to get the word this big, like, yeah. it, wow. And they're like, have you seen this? It's, it's yeah. one of my first tattoos. I want it to be perfect. Wow. It is the thing. Like I seen like a lot of like, the small, like black and gray or like, no, Miley Cyrus. She has all kinds of little things all revived. He's done, he's done a lot of hers. Okay. And there you go. Those were, those were I, I, house calls during, uh, uh, she would have tattoo parties at her too. Yeah, supposedly. yeah, and okay. he would, he would. That was a lot of times was him. Like he would Sick. give okay. me a call and be like, "Look where I am," and it'd just be like him. <laughs> and like, yeah, that. So that's probably what really inspired Miley stuff too. This little teeny writing. Yeah, it's and little shit. teeny tattoos. That's common and, stuff for like style for girls. I mean, it's a, it's a common style right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, if right you now. see a lot of like models and everything, where not just for girls, but yeah, but a lot of models that you see that they don't have tons of tattoos, but they only have like five or six, but they're like, real right. small and they're real perfect yeah. and dainty uh-huh. and like so yeah. thin and light that you see like writing like on the side on the side right here. Like, oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah like this just small stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, su- it's super popular now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But really Wu found his whole world too. Yeah, small. Well, I remember like well, Wu's like one of the original fucking single needle yeah, make it man. look but was, he's what i mean i don't that's not my style i don't yeah. want a tattoo like that i mean don't get me wrong i would die to tattoo like him <laughs> yeah. he's the fucking best you know what i mean yeah but it's he can do that writing or he yeah. can do uh like your dog <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, that portrait. looks exactly like your dog or whatever you know and so that's the difference is that a lot of people, I don't think I've ever seen Joey do a portrait. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's more right. has her own niche. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, m- I remember has that. I can do everything. Yeah. I was randomly there at one time at um, Shamrock when he tattooed Drake's dad on his forearm. I was there that day. For some reason I saw my friend Cody works there. I remember Drake had that first yeah. kind of tattoo from him. Wow. Yeah. A small little yeah. detailed photo. It was crazy. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of kind of, it's kind of like the, like a, just a black and gray. Yeah, on his yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but his, I mean, and Wu has two million followers for, yeah. for tattooing and like things like that. Like, but he's definitely, you know, the average person can't get an appointment. You can't. You know what I mean? I'm his friend, and if I called him up and said, "Hey, can I get a tattoo?" He'd be like. Yes, I'll schedule him for next January, but like 2023. And you're like, damn, damn dude. Like, yeah, you have, you're literally so out booked. That yeah, it's crazy. Do you, do you love it just as much as skating? Because in skating, you're creating as well. And this is yeah. another way to create. And I honestly do. I, yeah. I, I actually, when I really started getting into it, I thought that, wait a minute, this is just like skating for me. Mm-hmm. It's scary. You know what I mean? It's yeah. It's something that I'm not. I'm not scared anymore. But yes, there was times where the first, you know, before I did the tattoo, I had to say, "Hold on one second and I'd go outside and walk around a block smoking cigarettes, going, wow. "Okay, you could do this. You could do this." You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was nerve wracking. Like this is on <laughs> yeah. them forever. Like, yeah, forever. You know what I mean? And you don't know this person, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was nerve wracking, you know. And then it kind of got a little easier and easier and then you just start to trust your machine you start to trust your ability of what you can and can't do yeah i personally know if you came at me and said hey can you do a mike tyson photo i'd be like no go to somebody <laughs> yeah, else yeah. you know what i mean yeah. i don't do portraits like yeah. yeah what do you like to do what's your style like what kind of stuff that's do you like? the one thing that is kind of the niche that 
I why I haven't like gotten to where I want to be in it yet or whatever is that I don't I haven't found my style yet. Okay. At this moment, I like to do people's customs tattoos. Okay. Because I want them to tell me what they want, then mm-hmm. let me draw it up for you and then yeah. let me do it. Because, you know, there's a lot of people like Wu and everybody else that they have their circles or things that, you know, that that's what they're known for. So then yeah. they can add that into whatever they wanted to. For me, because I'm still, I'm constantly wanting to like evolve and learn and whatever. I just would rather people say, Hey, I have this idea. I want a snake wrapped around a fucking switchblade or something like that. I'm like, <laughs> okay, cool. Let me draw that up. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And that I, I don't know. It's, it's definitely, that was my goal of 2022 was mm-hmm. to try to find more of what do I enjoy drawing the most? You yeah. know what I mean? Like things that I want to draw, they make me happy. And then they're more your little characters. Like how you see Mark Gonzalez has that character, yeah. how you see Ed Templeton has his mm-hmm. little characters and yeah. whatever. It's like everybody has their, that's their style. Yeah. And I'm sure if Ed Templeton decided he wanted to do tattoos, he'd have lines out the door yeah. of people oh, just gosh. going, I just want that fucking gremlin yeah you know for I mean? his artwork like, oh or neck God. face it's the same thing oh, they yes. have their own yeah. style you know uh-huh. i never i remember lars from rancid was doing tats back in the day he, i got a rancid he was just doing rancid punks i got one from back in the day and then he started doing it then he started like going to england and getting flown out to places to tattoo just rancid tattoos and yeah it was so cool of course Such why not a cool thing yeah mm-hmm. and that's and i have a friend who is from australia that moved i don't know three years ago to america then moved to new york Started tattooing, but had her own style. And within eight months, had her own tattoo shop. Jeez. And now she's doing fucking like 15, 20 tattoos a week. Wow, man. And they're all her little like characters. Mm. And I've never seen her do any custom pieces. It's just her characters. Yeah. And it's kind of like, I get it. You know, I, I wish that I had that little, uh, or not wish, I, I need to come up with what I'm really into and make that my little like yeah. niche because she's selling so many of her like three eyed dragons and, or whatever they yeah. are. They're just, you know, pumpkins with fucking 10 eyes. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's crazy how many tattoos she's doing. Literally. Like she's on Instagram every day with like scrolling, you scroll over and it's just multiple tattoos. Wow. I'm like, are you doing these every day? Holy shit. Yeah. Like, and you, you now own your own shop. You'd like to be that busy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want to have it where, because I don't want to take away from skating and yeah. everything else, but I would like, instead of doing maybe four a week or whatever I do, and there are kind of two here and two here, yeah. it'd be nice if I can do like four days a week and have like four each one of those days where I drive down to Venice, work for fucking seven, eight hours, then come back the next day, then wait two days I can go out and yeah. like have fun with my friends, go skating, do whatever, and then come back and do another day or two and then go out. And, yeah. You know, it would be nice to have constant cause I enjoy doing it. That's the yeah. thing. I, I really love doing it. And when I sit there with Joey and he has one person after another, after another yeah. coming in, I'm not looking at it as like cha-ching, cha-ching, no, cha-ching. No, no. I'm looking at it like, Damn it! I want to fucking draw on somebody. Yeah, just get, like, you like, get better as you do that. Yeah, like, yeah. Every time I do it, I I like, I get happy at the <laughs> yeah. beginning. I mean, at the beginning, I'm like psyched. In you surprise yourself it, too. Yeah, in yeah. the middle of it, like, you know, when I'm getting a tattoo, I'm like, this is taking forever, and this I can tattoo for yeah. hours. Yeah. And I'm just in a zone, you know, yeah. and I just love doing it. And then when you're done and you're actually wiping it away and you're looking at part, it, you man. go, Wow, I did that. Yep. Like that's that's crazy <laughs> that. I it's can't believe that, that I did that and it's fucking beautiful and I'm really happy about that. And to see someone's face light up, I guess it's, it's amazing, the feeling dude. of what a chef would have if somebody totally. sees like love their dish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. All right, back to skateboarding for one second. Was I know Baker Three was a big a big uh a big part for you. But before that was was there a moment where you were on the map like like don't fuck with this kid. This kid's like not legitimized you or made you like you. You everybody knew who you were. Like, is there a moment on a, a clip or is there something that put you on that map? Like, kind of how like there'll be a, there'll be a moment with tattooing where you find your niche and what your style is, and that we're gonna go to Braden for this. Like, were you known for something in skateboarding that put you in that world or not? I think, I mean personally, I really don't know. I mean, I because I've in my skating, I've tried to 
treat it as any artist would. Yeah. I don't want to just be known as one thing. You know, I've wanted my first video part was this is skateboarding and it was pretty much all handrails. Okay. And I went as big as I possibly could. Then the next part was, I, I don't know. There's been a lot of them yeah, in my yeah, life. Yeah. And then the <laughs> next part there was like, and I remember in Baker three, I remember having like doing more manuals. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then at the same time, was one of the first Hesh dudes mm-hmm. to kind of, because everybody expected you to have fucking the biggest, baggiest pants yep. on, a triple XL shirt, and that's what you did was you were like a Brandon Beeble and all these people yeah. that were like, you were fresh, and that's how you skated like that. And I think when I had long hair, ripped up T-shirts, Pirate fucking style, tight, man. tight pants, and I'm doing fucking I manuals that yeah. most manual skaters were like, uh, and you were skating the Aussie. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. Like, and and yeah. Day Wong hit me up and said, I can't believe that was fucking amazing. You know, when that happened, I think that's when I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. But between a couple of the manuals, I think the ones at UCLA that I did in Baker 3, and then the end of the part when I did the Caballero flip, and then the Shifty flip, that's kind of what I think everybody knew me as was okay. he did – two of the heaviest manuals back then yeah Mm -hmm. and then you did two of the fucking heaviest stair tricks back then yeah yeah now every kid can do everything but yeah you know for that era it was like i'm i don't know i wasn't even i I remember like uh i watched baker three religiously they like (laughs) it was like the biggest thing in the world to me when i said i think i was like i was probably like 17 or 18 when it when it came out but like the one thing I've always loved about Baker, and I, I guess to kind of help answer your question is that like Baker has this like raw style to it. Like everybody's like raw, but everybody has their own different style yeah. Yeah. of raw. Well, that's you know that's what, what I mean. Like every everybody stands out. Like the daggers? like no no one's the same. Everyone's like got their individual like style, but you know it's a raw style and it fits the Baker world. And yeah. gotcha. like you know that I mean that, that Baker three hit massive i mean i still think it's the from what i recall it was the number one highest looked up skate video oh and highest sold video in skate history yeah it was it was it was crazy i remember it hit so big yeah it's still i mean i haven't what was that fucking 2006 yeah yeah, yeah, 2006 (laughs) yeah i still every day on instagram like kids tag me and my part every day i'm like wow they still watch this part in this video it's it's a good the video like still to this day i think that video i mean i holds it it holds its weight i can still watch antoine and fucking oh my god part yeah all day long and be like you guys still i drop those video parts right now yes would be the best two video parts out there again Mm -hmm. right now I, and I, I loved Ellington's part too. Yeah, me too. Oh my god! You know, he, he closes with that Carlsbad. I think he just yeah. Switch three sixty. Nah, There's big spin. A, big spin. Big yeah. spin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plus your whole style and cool. It had like a Dogtown vibe. Like I remember first meeting you guys at Brooklyn Projects, and my son was his favorite movie is Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> and you guys just roll up your whole crew and just like scraggly <laughs> and fucking like you said like ripped Me up shit and Eric Humboldt, Max was like yeah. holy shit like pirates can skate like Max was tripping because <laughs> no. Max was so he young he was so young back so then young, but yeah. seeing you guys just shred like just you had such like a dog town vibe man it was such a cool vibe the whole crew I mean I forgot that one guy's name you rolled with too he's a, he's a, a well known skater as well fuck I forgot his name is uh, it on Baker I don't know who the guy was he had, he had total pirate vibe too the headbands and his name i mean there was uh, always me and eric hamoto were always together mm-hmm. um like a bird kind of knows figgy i don't no. know man i used to hold the whole energy the vibe was just so cool because it wasn't pretty it wasn't like <laughs> perfect you know what i'm saying it wasn't like well that to- was Tony skateboarding Hawk back ride. then which yeah, was yeah, yeah yeah it was it's like <laughs> he said skateboarding in my era and it'll never not be my era i love skateboarding forever yeah but <laughs> <laughs> um Back in when I was a kid and the 90s and I wasn't skating in the 80s, but I imagine it was just the same and early 2000s and whatever. It was raw. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like that's There wasn't managers. Mm -hmm. There wasn't agents. There wasn't fucking people and so many corporations, you know? Skateboarding was like, it was like having an older brother that all you wanted to do was be part of they're fucked up click you know what i mean yeah. and you didn't care what happened to be part of it you just did whatever and everybody wasn't worried about 
what the rest of the world thought of you. Yeah. Most people that were in skateboarding, almost everybody I know, friends and family were divorced and all yeah. came from some fucked up world. Same as punk yeah. rock. Yeah, yeah. They, they were yeah. all like, it Misfits. was, it was yeah. punk rock. You yeah. Know what I mean, it was the definition of what punk was. You know what I mean? Agreed. We were the fucking athlete punks yeah you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. that that's probably why baker hit, the baker three hits so big is because there's the, you know there's so many kids out there that connected with that like yeah like, yeah I, I i don't come from you know from the greatest childhood but you know what like i can skate i can look like this and you know still have a bunch of fun yeah with and my, you had friends, friends. And yeah you yeah, had yeah, people yeah. that were that had your back just like yeah. a gang just like yeah. anything you all had something but One, then at the same mm-hmm. time you pushed each other every day to what the fuck, you know, yeah. whether I had a broken leg or not, I was still out skating with my friends Damn. and I was moral support. Yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? You were the one that going, you got this. Yeah. You fucking got this. Don't listen to your head, man. You could do this right here. This is it. This is going to be the one. We're all going to fucking celebrate like a motherfucker, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> the family. Yeah. It was everybody Super had each family. other's back, you know? And that was pre-internet it, too, right? It was pre-social media. Too. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Fuck. That, that, changed, that changed a lot too, though. Yeah. Yeah. You know about the piss drunks? Well, those those were the best days. Bro. Piss drunk. Yeah, that was your crew. Right the, the complete, oh, the PD, yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the complete opposite of an X on our hands. Yeah, the complete opposite. <laughs> There's a wild bunch. Yeah, oh, good. we're, That's we're, we're a little misfits. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> so you guys are, yeah. So what year is that? That's or is that 90s or is that? 2000? That was 90s and 2000s, and now Dustin Dolan turned it into a clothing company. Uh, wow. PD Clothing, and that's oh oh doing he really did? good. Yeah. Wow. I'm definitely cop us some merch. Yeah. I don't drink anymore, but I still hey, want to no support. Worries, no worries. I want to support. <laughs> I, that, I'm, I mean, I'm, that, I'm on the same level. I don't know. I'm, I'm like, uh, from what we were to, <laughs> Hey babe, like I'll have a couple glasses of wine, like once every couple weeks or something yeah. like that. We did something really supportive. Like tonight I have this ritual after I'm done with a tattoo. I probably shouldn't say this is super not piss drunk of me. But yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I go and have a fucking a Heineken Zero, and I'm like, ah, wow, yeah. I feel good about myself. You know what I mean? But I, yeah. I, I don't wake up the next day and feel like uh, I don't know. No, f- no offense to anybody that listens to this. Hangovers don't feel as good at my age. You know, as they older. Used yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they suck now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Who, who were your skaters you looked up to back then? Oh, oh, growing man. up. I mean, it would always be Kenny Anderson, Tom Penny. That okay. was, that was Locals, always too, number that's one. Sick. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Then there was always, I mean, it's weird because everybody's my friend. Now, you yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. now I call them, hey, what are you guys doing? You want to oh, go grab a fucking a coffee? So crazy. Said, you know, like, yeah. but there was always Chad. He was from Vegas. It was always the Muska. There was always Jamie Thomas until I met him. And then now we're, now we're close <laughs> friends. But when I first met him, I, wasn't I, like I, that. I was like, you were my fucking idol, dude. Dude, that happened to I, me so many times, bro. I, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst when you meet somebody, man. Oh, it happened to me so many times. I'm like, I wish I had met certain people. And then there's some I met. I'm like, holy shit. You're actually opposite of what I thought you were going to be. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yes. I mean? That's amazing. Marilyn Manson. Okay. <laughs> he was the opposite of what I thought he was going to be. Mm. I was expecting him to be like super smart guy, dickhead, fucking whatever. Sweetest guy I've ever met. And like, Wow. Real mod tone voice. Hey, pleasure to meet you. Wow. Like, Oh, you know, hugging everybody, yeah. telling fucking people how cool and whatever they are. Like, how many years is, ago was that? I don't know. This is early 2000s. Okay. Like, yeah. He was still in his like prime, but I was like, wow, I really thought that guy was going to be a dick. Mm-hmm. Super cool. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, do you, did you guys feel like, uh, uh, did you guys feel like when Baker three hit, did you guys feel like how big it got or you mm, kind of were just like no we were, you're in the moment because like because like, well, like, like when think i think about reason. it it i think that set a new tone for skateboarding it, it really did you might hand me that uh water oh, yeah, yeah. liquid think, death yeah liquid death thank you liquid <laughs> <death>. <laughs> it set the tone back then right well, yeah I think I, that I, what I, happened was when i worked on america videos with john minor mm-hmm. and you know they were very serious Minor had a schedule. We went to the countries. You know, you went to sleep at, you, he would wake everybody up at eight in the morning. We'd be eating, we'd be on the road, we'd be skating 12, 13, 14 hour days. Damn. You know what I mean? And you go home, you weren't, you were too tired to go to a bar, you were too tired to do anything. Even if you were in that country, you're like, you know how many countries we went to where we didn't really have, yeah, we were just 
fucking filming for the video. Yeah. And we spent years filming for the video and we got it done. And then Baker three, which I've never been part of another video like that, where there was no pressure of anything. It was, yeah. Hey man, we're just going to like go out skating. You go on. You guys want to stop and get a 12 pack? Cool. Let's get a 12 pack. And then like, <laughs> Everybody's drinking like p- PD uh, sparks. Yeah. Yeah. That was like it, uh, the big thing oh, was yeah. drinking sparks. The, the sparks and like, you know, and then tours consisted of, Hey, who wants to go where? Okay. The vote all says we should go to Australia. Who wants to go to Australia? Oh, let's all go to Australia. Okay, cool. Do we have anything planned? No, Dustin lives there. We'll just meet up with Dustin. Do you know what I mean? Like just fly there and like, okay, well we're here for a month. So Let's wow. just go skate. And like everybody just went skating. You woke up and did your own schedule. If you didn't feel like going out, you didn't have to fucking get in the car and feel like it was like pressured to be there. Yeah. It was kind of like, hey, man. Oh, what's his face? X, Y, Z fucking met a girl last night. We haven't seen him for three days. You know what I mean? <laughs> like nobody's mad at him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then he'll come back and be like, let me tell you a story. Get in the van. We're ready. And he'll land five fucking tricks that next day because he was juiced and like wow. what type of fun he had for the last three days you know what i mean yeah. and nobody was mad and so there wasn't any pressure with anything and i don't think any of us thought it was going to be as big as it was wow we didn't think anything of it it was just more or less like cool we get to go to a premiere yeah <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean like everything's rad and then there ended up being we showed up in a limo Wow. And we had to get circled around the back because there was millions of people, it felt like, on, on Hollywood Boulevard. And then the next thing you know, there's a riot. You know what I mean? And oh, it turned into, and it was that riot that like people were calling me from fucking Europe the next day and whatever, going, We're watching the news. Wow. And there's fucking talking about Baker's skateboard started a riot where they had to get riot police on fucking Hollywood Boulevard. The footage is insane. So like what like like 5,000 kids okay. fucking running on a Friday night or Saturday night. You know, there's cars everywhere. Yeah. People are just running over cars. Wow. And no fights. Nothing. Okay. You know what I mean? Maybe there's a couple bottles thrown at, like, the police or something like that. But there was no fights between uh-huh. kids. There was no anything pushing, of course. And, yeah, like, people course. trying to get in and doing whatever. But it turned into a full-blown riot where they had to, like, start doing the... Con- canisters and yeah. whatever oh, and shit. and it was like made world news Fuck. that's and crazy we were not expecting that we actually had to get rushed out the back door into a fucking thing <laughs> and then taken off to a house party or, or to the after party <laughs> or wherever so it was because they were like you guys have to go because you're starting too much shit on this fucking block like wow but none of us expected that we were just like Oh, the premiere's finally here. Cool. Like, everybody was drinking for, like, two days because we finally finished the editing. We were <laughs> yeah. drinking for, like, two days before. Everybody's friends and family were in from different countries and different places, yeah. you know, because we had teammates from all this over the world. This gave me chills. Crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah, we were just, like, it was a giant party. And then we pulled up and we're like, I never had my stomach drop so hard because I've never seen so many people chanting your name, you know what I mean? Wow, like, man. And it was just waves and waves and waves and it was pre-social media and yeah. pre-things where it was it was real an, life it was love. it was an era real you know what love. i mean yeah. it was you doing your shit and word of mouth spread that big you know and yeah. that's that's special you know there's yeah. not like i put out an instagram and fucking ten thousand people seen it and we <laughs> forgot about it the next day or whatever you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. like you wow. you gotta watch the video if you haven't seen it yet. Baker three. No, I did see it before oh, back you then. Oh, but okay, yeah, okay. But, but I, I I like to watch but it. But I think yeah, yeah I think the feel of it was was yeah. we actually showed for the first time, maybe I don't, I think maybe ever, real life skateboarding, and that's why I think it did so well was mm. because old videos before that showed skateboarding. Yes, there was videos with the Gons and Guy Mariano and all them driving a car off a cliff and, you know, old yeah. H Street videos. And Animal things Chin. Like, Animal Chin, yeah. like And these and videos like that where there was like some like Jason Lee being an actor and yeah. people doing things like that. Yeah. This was like, we showed you what we see every day in the streets. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We see that crackhead fucking getting in a fight and breaking bottles over yeah. each other. We see that person trying to stab somebody. When I'm skating this spot, there is somebody shitting over there on the corner. There's yeah. somebody fucking chasing us down the street with a fucking knife. Like, yeah, 
So we actually put the hijinks that we see every day as little clips in the video. And yeah. I think that was like the first reality check of every skateboarder knew that that actually happens. Yeah. But you yeah. couldn't explain that to people because nobody understood that if the cr- spot you want to skate is in the roughest neighborhood in Brazil, you will fucking go to that spot. Mm-hmm. Whether there's 100%. dudes with machine guns standing there and you know that fucking half the people get killed that fucking step foot on that property, yeah. you'll push your chances. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And like that's just what skateboarders do. It's is crazy. That they will either figure it out or they'll find a way to fix it, make it better, be there, and try to like do whatever they can to get the clip. Yeah. And in the meantime, you see lives. a lot of crazy shit, you know what I mean? And you put yourself in a lot of fucked up situations. And I think Baker three was the first time that people actually got to watch it and go, wait a minute. Nobody got to, I can't, ex- I've been trying to explain this to my mom yeah. forever. Yes. And I couldn't explain yes. that to so her. And here it is. Yeah. This, yeah. yeah. That's so amazing. Yeah. Cause Damn. you, like, like you said, like some of the other videos, yeah, people, like not every skateboarder is like driving, you know, a car off of something or yeah. anything like that, being or like you know, or being yeah. goofy. But that that's like the re- like every skater deals with something of that nature. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. We got the we got the show the original Karens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit, God. you did one hundred percent. Did wow. you feel pressure after that to film skate part skate clips after that, Baker? Um, or ever no, feel pressure to do no. like a perfect video? Uh, no, I mean, I've always had fun with my parts. Yeah. Um, I think right after that, yeah, we went straight into stay gold, which would have been once again, right with John minor. And we were, it went right back from like, wow, a fun do whatever to like, this is a video. It's serious. Like Mm. we're, you know, work, work, work. And, and don't get me wrong. I love that because he taught me to be a different type of skater than I was. You know what I mean? And that's like, that mentality of I didn't fly you here so you can fucking fuck off. Yeah. We flew you here. We paid for you to do Mm -hmm. all this. We paid for your hotel and everything so that your ass can get the clips and do what you have to do to sell your shoe and sell your product. You know what I mean? And it's, it taught me a whole different like street, not street, uh, business sense was working with minor and, and the America squad and all those other people. And I really appreciate both sides of it, you know? And then I think right after that, we did like Baker has a death, which was once again, another fucking Mm -hmm. have fun video that you can do whatever, but we didn't take it nearly as serious as when you're working on an America video. Like you can see the difference if you watch Andrew Reynolds, Baker three part, and then you watch Andrew Reynolds stay goal part. Okay. He knew that that was going to be his, like, this part is going to define me. Wow. You know, and he worked for five years as hard as he possibly could for that video part. And I still, wow. me and Andrew don't talk anymore. We're not like friends, not close on any means. We don't have any aggression towards each other. We just don't talk. Yeah. And I don't care who or what. I will always say that that will be one of the best skate video parts that was ever made Damn. in history. Wow. And I also got lucky enough to watch it. Be yeah. Made, you know what I mean? Yeah. Be there while he flew himself all the way to fucking sat down and said, Hey, I need to go to Paris. I have this trick in my mind at the fucking Louvre. Wow. Like we're going to base a whole trip off of this trick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. So, yeah. For you, you're like, you're hanging on the streets. You didn't, you, you, you didn't graduate. You're just in the streets skating. That's what you love it. Then you get out here and then become professional. Then you have to deal with business and money and balancing all that and being smart about it too. So you're learning all that all at the same time. Because you're making money and all that shit. Yeah, I definitely got uh, thrown head first into it. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you never really have a business sense but or that kind of stuff. I, guess, I would, yeah. I, and, and I learned, and luckily I have friends like you guys, and I have friends in all, we have a lot of the mutual friends yeah. that run everything in every industry out here. Totally. So I've gotten lucky enough to to watch and, yeah, and learn. learn, and which to me... You can go to college for four years in business, but at the end of it, uh, most of those people who graduate work for somebody else. 100%, you know what man. I mean? And then there's the people who it doesn't matter what it is. They got thrown into it and you're literally living it. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's true. I mean, I do wish 
because of where I'm at, it would be rad to have those four years of education of college for business. None of this would have been possible if, or my world wouldn't even been in this world if I did do that. Yeah. But it would be rad to like have somebody. So that's why, you know, I hire people also besides myself. It's always nice to have people you really trust Yeah. to help you with your companies and run them and do things like that. So, yeah, it's interesting to say, cause I usually, well, one of my questions is, do you have any regrets? And sometimes I think to myself, maybe I, if I went to college, maybe I would learn some more things I could be using in my life right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not that I, but if I didn't, if I did go to college, I would never move to New York by myself when I was 18, got dropped out of CBGBs, started working in the music industry, then behind the scenes and starting a band. So, you know what I mean? But like, well, it's, you chose your life, you know yeah. what I mean? And you, regrets? Come on now. Life's too short for regrets. Uh, yeah. Like, I, I can see that in you that you, that's like, where you are. If I could, I would do the whole thing over again. Damn. <laughs> and I would do it the exact same way. I love it that. doesn't matter like how many things I've failed and lost and how many, you know, ups and downs I've had. It was fun. Mm. Yeah. It was damn fun. And like, yeah. <laughs> I don't care if I died dead poor. Like I enjoy every moment. I, I do really live by the, it's better to have a rich full life of things that you enjoy and love to do and enjoy over a long or a rich short life of things you love and yeah. whatever over a long life of working for somebody and doing whatever and things that you hate. You know what I mean? I mm -hmm. fucking love that, man. I agree. Totally. I, I think that my life has been blessed in so many ways. I mean, I've worked my ass off for it, but yeah. the ups and downs are part of life. That's yeah. what builds character. It's fun. Yeah, you never want to quit skateboarding ever. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck never. no. Okay. Skateboarding is gonna be me for my whole life. Yeah. You so know you what I mean? Even, like yeah. I'm a I'm gonna skate and skate and skate and I don't care if I'm like 70 years old. I'm <laughs> still gonna be like, watch this. <laughs> I can I, I can I can do a fakie flip. I know I can. <laughs> Are there tricks you can't do from back then now? Like you do everything you pretty much learned your whole life. No. I mean, it just depends how, if, if I start skating every day for a couple months, I can generally get back my, all my flat ground, all my okay. everything. But I have tricks that come in and out for some reason. I can't do a switch heel flip to save my fucking life anymore, <laughs> but I've been able to do them my whole life, That's but they've crazy. been like that. They're, they're like, yeah. sometimes I would do them then I couldn't do them for two years. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden they come back and like right now, the last like six months, every time I try, I go, what the fuck? Fuck, I swear. You put your foot right here. You put your other foot right here. You push. Why won't it work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do Hollywood 16 right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so do you, I mean, I skate with you mini ramps. You shred ramps. Like, you skated vert too, obviously, before. No. no. There was no vert ramps in Vegas. Damn. Oh, and then. Could you skate, when I skate mini ramps with you, you skate like you could skate like a fucking 13 foot half pipe No, or no, no, no. I, I, everything, <laughs> everything changes after, everything changes after six feet. Okay. And it was all due to, there was a ramp once when I was a kid. Gotcha. My, it was some neighbor had a, a 11 foot ramp or 10 foot. And I stood up there for like 15 minutes trying to talk myself into dropping in. And I had my uh, right foot on my tail. Yep. And I didn't realize that my left shoelace was untied and I was standing on it on my right foot. Oh, fuck. And finally, after like 10 minutes, I go, okay, I'm ready. And I went like this, like <laughs> to drop in and my foot didn't move. So I just fell all the way to the flat Dude. and like knocked wind out of oh, me, like brutal. bruised my ribs, everything. And I... Never really cared about Big Tranny. <laughs> I was like, nah, this After is that, cool, yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> vert and all that kind of freaked me out a little bit. I mean, I'll skate it. I'll do some 50-50s, but I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm very cautious. Yeah. Okay. Are, are there tricks you're still trying to learn now? Are you trying to still push yourself and learn more things? Yeah, always. And, always. Yeah. I have a few tricks in my head that I've had in my head my whole life that I'm like, you can't really be done until that's mm, that. Like a bucket list. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have... A couple tricks, and my life goal in skateboarding is to have cover of Thrasher one day. Wow. And I've never had it. And so. I'll You've keep... been in there, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A ton yeah. of times. But, and I just had an interview in the last Thrasher that just came out. Oh, that's awesome, man. And I just had a video part that dropped you said last that month. Yeah, that's in cool. Thrasher. But I will continue to fight. <laughs> 
and I'll continue. I don't care. That's maybe, a sick maybe. Goal. I, I mean, hopefully they'll be like this forty-year-old man. Fucking, <laughs> <laughs> he, he nailed it. You know what I mean? But it's, <laughs> it's pretty hard with these fucking kids nowadays. Oh shit! Yeah, it's great. It's almost like. For a guy, us in music, like, or you, you've been a comedian, like, there's some young, yeah. up and coming, amazing comedians, there's some amazing new punk bands, there's some amazing new skaters. All that inspires me. I'm not like an old head where I'm like, fuck that new rap, it's mumble, all that. That's not punk to me. I, I love all the new shit. It's yeah, inspiring, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. Are, are there young skaters you that you fuck with or you, yeah. you, you learn things from? Or Yeah, of course. I mean, I probably don't as much walk up and ask them how they did it. You yeah. Know what I mean? But I sit there with my jaw drop. Mm. And just go, what the flying shit, dude? Yeah. Like, it's crazy, man. This is you haven't fallen in like twenty minutes that I've been watching, <laughs> right. and every trick is like my ender of every video yeah. part yeah. I've ever had. <laughs> it's crazy how young they're starting, how fucking yeah. they shred. It's yeah. like, it's crazy. I mean, man. they probably, I mean, like, like I said, they probably go back and watch a lot of these old videos, and you <laughs> get that feeling. And shit, and yeah. they, they have well, not know. only that. Every city has 15 skate parks. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're the best skate parks ever. Mm -hmm. We learned a kickflip. There was a four stair next. Then there was an eight stair. Then there was a 10. Then there was a 12. Mm -hmm. Cool. Like, (laughs) there wasn't like, I mean, yeah, there wasn't no skate park. I remember after I kickflipped the four, I tried to kickflip this eight on the other side of town. This is mid 90s, like 97, 96 or something. Must have been like 96 or five or something. Mm -hmm. And, I broke my ankle and my friends were with us. We didn't have any money. We didn't have cell phones back then. We didn't have shit. We were like 20 miles from the house. And I had to get with a broken ankle, sit on my butt on my board. And I pushed for probably like four and a half miles. Wow. Like just down the street with one friend as two other friends skated all the way home and finally grabbed somebody's parents and they came back. But by that point I already made like four miles of just me like this <laughs> with shit. a fucking snapped ankle and like uh. and i think that that's things like that are exactly why i don't fear injuries yeah and i don't you know i've seen people freak out i'm like the type of guy that like if a bone pops out i get mad mm. i don't get like oh my god i'm more like Motherfucker! Yeah, get do you back know, in there. Do you know that? Like, God damn it! I start thinking about the cost of things. Yeah. I start thinking about like now I can't skate for the yeah. next fucking. What about tattooing? Like, yeah. you know, I don't get like. There's nothing. If anything, I'll, I actually start laughing because it's more like this is fucking hilarious. Fuck. Did you guys see this? My arm is not even attached to my body anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> how many bones have you broken? Everything. Damn. Head injuries too. Yeah. Yeah. Concussions, probably. Yeah, yeah, I've had so many staples put in my head. Fuck. My arms, lumps. I think my left wrist seven times, uh, my right wrist six times, every finger, every toe. My left ankle, I think it was last I counted. I mean, if I already have like, what are they called? Uh, cankles. <laughs> 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 because <clears throat> my left ankle is like seven breaks, Holy six shit. breaks. The right ankle is so many breaks, it's crazy. Uh, foot a bunch of times, arms, Jesus, shoulders, man. four ACL surgeries where I tore those, my spine, my five and six, uh, vertebrae cracked those fuck man, like five or six ribs. Uh, <laughs> God, God, damn. Man, it's crazy. Well, I've gotten lucky cause nothing's been besides my knee. Nothing was surgery wise. Okay. I've never had to get plates put in me. Okay. You know what I mean? Like where I've had other friends who fall one time and they're like, I'll never walk again. There's 19 (laughs) fucking like things going through my leg. And I'm like, how did that happen? Yeah. (laughs) Every time it's been a clean break and they just snap it back. And then Uh they're like, you're fucked for the next whatever. But the only two that really was the worst one. Yeah. I mean, the most painful one was the spine. Okay. Because you can't sleep. Fuck. You can't laugh. You can't fucking cough. You know what I mean? Like when you swallow, if somebody makes you laugh or just, you know, if you, you just fart, it, you're yeah. like, <laughs> like try to go to the bathroom with fucking broken spine Dude. things. It's not fun. Like that. It's brutal. Yeah. That, that one was the worst. And that, and that was like months. And the fucked up part is when it's your four and five, it's connected to the muscles that go down your arms. So yeah. my right arm, 
was constantly in pain. Like it wow. felt like, like if you had an older brother that beat you to fucking death, dead arms, <laughs> yeah. but like, after you already had a dead arm, they kept hitting you for months. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it felt like. So fuck. that was the most painful. Yeah. That was the only one where sometimes I would just get frustrated in bed and just start crying. Cause I'd be like, I'm just in that much pain. I just, I can't, Ugh. you know what I mean? Like this sucks. But then the other annoying ones would be ACLs. And that's oh, yeah. because you can't, you're, you're, you're fucked. Yeah. You know, like you can't walk. Mm hmm. You're fucking literally sitting in a bed for four months. Damn. Then man. you have to do re rehabilitation yeah, for like, that, yeah. And the next thing you know, a year has gone by. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh my god, that was just so long of my life. Like, yeah. I about, guess those. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I was gonna say, you think about skating the whole time for sure. Was no. Oh yeah. It was, uh, I, uh, the go, going back to the ACLs. I guess like the technology has like gotten so much better. Oh, I've heard with ACLs, like people are recovering like so quick with it well i've gotten lucky because i have a lot of friends and they have a scar across their knee this big yeah yeah and seen that. i did my first two were microscopic so they i don't even have a scar because they did three different like dots really so oh, i never awesome. they didn't have to cut it which was a blessing and then the third time <clears throat> it was the same thing but they took and every time they took a cadaver yeah which was always weird because i like had dead people parts in my body <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> and then <laughs> and then fucked. and then the last time it happened was over 10 years ago and the technology got that much better that they learned that there's this muscle in the lower part of your leg that it connects to your acl and it's one of the strongest muscles in your body but you don't use it wow and so unlike a cadaver that your body could like reject it and that's why you keep tearing it because you know maybe you're you didn't fucking yeah connect together perfectly yeah, yeah. this is your body your body will instantly uh fuse to it and like it grew they put it in the last time and i've been fine for over 10 years like wow it's just been a very That's strong knee. amazing yeah so Damn. yeah like you said and i know that yeah eventually when i'm like 55 or 60 i'm gonna have to get fucking a mechanical knee put in but even then i've talked to doctors and they were like your parents and grandparents, that was painful. Already the technology we have yeah, for a sure. new knee is like, you're like a True. fucking, yeah. you're like Iron yeah. Man or something yeah. like that. And they go, so by the time you're 60, they're like, come on, you're going to go to sleep and you're going to wake up and be like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm the straight Terminator. Just doing high kicks <laughs> yeah. in the room. <laughs> yeah, I guess hip surgery too, the same thing in the future. Yeah, I that's can imagine. Gnarly. I heard that's so gnarly, hip surgery. Yeah, my yeah. mom got it. She, I think she, she did pretty good. She did? Yeah. Yeah, maybe like in the future might that. be way easier than that, like yeah. the new stuff. Um, <laughs> you, one of my questions are you optimist or pessimist, but you seem super positive. You consider yourself realist? <laughs> I mean, I have to stay positive, man. Yeah. Life's too fucking crazy for me. And yeah. there's too many ups and downs. And, you know, if the shit that's happened to me happened to most people, they would have already off themselves by now. And like, I'm yeah. pretty, if I don't stay positive and stay focused on like, the fun and positive things in life, then I don't see any real reason why I need to be sitting around fucking wasting time. I love that, man. So yeah, life is fun. <laughs> yeah. Really it seems fun. you live it to the fullest too. And yeah, I'm not one of those people, you know, like if I'm miserable and I can't find a way out, I'm a move. I'll try something new. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I'll go to fucking Vietnam if I have to and see if what that happens out there or Thailand. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand yeah. like how people get to that situation. Cause I'm like, run away, try yeah. something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For all, I, you know, I'm 38 and I know that I haven't met every fucking, maybe there's going to be, you know, a new dog in my life eventually that yeah. I haven't met. There's going to be new, maybe women. There's going to be new fucking friends. There's going to be, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't, see it as i'm stuck where yeah. there's always somewhere to go and something to do and that's physically and mentally because some people <clears throat> get stuck mentally places too you know yeah but you seem to like you talk about i think i heard well, we talked about it here if i can remember i looked i watched one of your interviews or something just always want to go leave vegas and see the world you know yeah. and get out of there and you've pretty much done that yeah except for thailand thailand russia <laughs> and uh poland poland yeah we talked about that yeah those are the three places I've never been. And if you hit those, you'd be pretty good. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm fucking bummed at myself for one of them because my dream destination oh. is Thailand. Okay. And, uh, 
You almost had a chance to go? Well, no, I was in Vietnam. Oh, shit. And we were there for 10 days or two weeks. And I was on a serious trip where I wanted, we were told that we were going to like get a bunch of skating done and mm -hmm. do this. And we were going straight from there and we had 10 days in Thailand. And at the end of the trip, everybody looks over and I'm walking the opposite. Well, they're all walking to Thailand. It's a 30 minute flight. Yeah. And they're walking this way and I'm walking this way. And they're like, where are you guys, where are you going? And I was like, peace out and fucking just bought myself a ticket and fucking flew home. Oh. And everybody was like, why'd you do that? And I go, because you guys, we came on this trip and I've touched my board. And this is, I was really serious about skating. Like wow. I really wanted to go skating in these places. And the crew were like, we're all going out there to skate. And I remember this was like, I really wasn't drinking at all at the time. And I didn't have one drink or anything in that like couple of weeks. We were there. Edge a little bit too. Yeah. We got there. Everybody just got fucking loaded the entire time. And we skated one time, one wow. fucking afternoon in 10 days. And the whole time I just sat there in like, you know, you have no internet, you have no TV, you have nothing that, like, oh, yeah. you, so you were just like sitting there and everybody's stealing. just getting wasted and like blacking out and blacking out and just doing it from morning till night. And I was just sitting there and finally, and I was like, I'm not doing it. I can't do 10 days in the dream destination I want to go to. Well, you guys aren't going to, and I'm just going to watch you guys do this again. If I'm going to come back here, I'm going to come back with my lady or something mm. and just that. do it the way I want to do it. Yeah. And he's left. I left, and then, of course, a year later, fucking the pandemic kicks in. And I'm like, if we can't ever travel again. And I, and, and I blew my fucking chance. Dude. No, like, you'd be fine. That's crazy. Just balance. You're, like, so over it. Like, you're yeah, sober, and you wanted to skate. Yeah, and so I just, they literally were walking, and everybody just went this way. And I started, and then they all just stopped, and I just remember just going, peace. I bought myself a ticket home. I'm out. And just Holy fucking shit. got on a plane and left. Wow. And was that shooting for a video, a, a certain video that came out? No, that was uh, one of my friends hit me up. Okay. He was like, hey, we're all going to Thailand. I'm going to Vietnam and then Thailand for a skate trip. We'd love if you came. And I was like, fuck, I always wanted to see those countries. Like, yeah. yeah, of course I'll go. And we got there and like I flew in in a different flight. And when I landed, they were already all wasted. And I was oh, like, yeah. no, that's fine. You know, everybody's yeah, yeah. going to be wasted the first day. Yeah, and then nice. it just never ended. <laughs> Damn. And so I just ended up like doing a lot of things by myself. I remember I have like a tattoo that I got in Vietnam oh, and that cool. was because everybody's wasted. And I just was like, I'm going to explore then mm -hmm. fuck this. And that's like cool. wandered off and found a tattoo shop, went and like sightseed by myself and would do that in every city that we went to because everybody else was content just sitting there at a bar. Yeah. Damn, you get tattooed over there. That's crazy. I know. I, I thought when I walked in the tattoo shop that they were going to give me one of those. Like, I had that oh, Japan. The, the, yeah, the, 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 you got one of those? Japan, yeah. I was expecting the that, stick, and I was yeah. like, dude, this is going to be fucking epic. This, yeah, no, comes out, <laughs> comes out, and I'm expecting I got a uh, scorpion on my knee, and I'm it, thinking it's going to be. There you did? Yeah, I was thinking it's going to be Holy shit. Fuck. It's like one of the fucking best tattoos I've ever gotten. After. I'm Holy like, shit. who the fuck was this guy? Like, yeah. <laughs> Was your knee all swollen flying home and shit? No, it was wow. fine. Like the dude was so light handed Damn, and that's I, amazing. you know, we spoke nothing. He spoke no English. I just showed him a picture of a fucking scorpion and was like, I want this right here. Wow. And that's hard to do that. Like in some other country, man, yeah. props for that, man. And he signed, I signed the waiver. I can tell that it was a clean shop and everything and was not expecting him to be that fucking talented. Damn, that's wow. Amazing. That's fucking sick. Yeah. I got hand poked at some crazy old school tattoo shop in Japan, like in the nineties on my leg. I'll show you. With the t -t 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 -t. You don't feel nothing, dude. Really? I thought really? that would be the most painful thing powerful. ever. It's nothing. It just, it's just the sound is fucked up because it's like just going into your skin. It's just really fast. It t -t 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 -t. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's like what's worse is getting lasered shit off. That fucking hurts. You get a tattoo lasered. I, I, I actually uh, want to do that on one. And it's not <laughs> that I want to get rid of the tattoo. Yeah. I want to just do that because I want to feel what it feels like. Everybody's told me it's fucking so brutal <laughs> you just gonna do it to try to check out the pain yeah i've, I've been told that it's just <laughs> it's unbelievable. worse than getting a tattoo oh, I've yeah, heard it's, it's like, fucking brutal and not, only that, skin, dude. and not only that but everybody's told me they're like a tattoo hurts while you're getting a tattoo yeah that's true yes it can be hours long and whatever yeah once it's done it's yeah, eh, yeah, whatever really, yeah. apparently this is a burn 
So when it burns, it bubbles up. And for like 10 days, it's still, it feels like an actual burn. Like yeah. it's in pain for days. And it bubbles up too. Like yeah. it bubbles up on your arm. You can't pop it. It's like an open wound. Yeah. It's fucking. It's like being on fire. Yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather just cover the shit up. I love going over stuff now. If I can't, if I have to laser it, I'll do it. But I see Travis Barker keeps doing that now. Yo, it looks so cool. It, I know. It's just like the black skull in his hand. Because yeah. he has such light gray work. That this shit's just popping on his. Yeah. I see it popping now. Yeah, it's, I seen that big one he just got right here. Yeah. And it's just like so bright compared to the things under it. I love that shit. I love when you can do that later on in life. And you it's have almost no room. like graffiti, mm-hmm. like having the Tagging background over piece. Shit. Yeah, it's like yeah. having the background piece. Yeah, his shit looks. Dude, his hand looks so sick. Just the popping. I didn't see that. It. Yeah, if he, yeah, in his hand he put a skull on there. Then it's on his some, IG. Yeah, they got some. Uh, they got uh, DTA somewhere in his leg. Oh, okay. He's doing his I, legs saw the, now, I, I saw that. I saw that. It's so addicting, bro. Isn't it? Ah, God. Trust me. I, I just can't stop, bro. Yeah, I, I can I tell you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but I don't know what I'm going to do. Besides like, your face, do you have anything uh, uh, that's not tattooed? Uh, uh, yeah, my taint and my fucking Johnson and my face. But I'm slowly doing my head. So all you my got sides, your, your ass cheeks, everything? Everything, bro. Everything. So you're never going to touch your face. Hi, mama. I'll never <laughs> do my face. Um, I might end, up, might end up doing... I was going to surprise my wife and do like... Uh, I just I can't got talk so in the podcast. much to read. Like. I know. <laughs> I was gonna put like a half moon surprise wife on my Johnson, Where? on my Johnson surprise her, but I don't know. The thing know. is, is that you got what? <laughs> what, what tattoo artist? The what, what, no, what tattoo artist? So that's the question. Probably because Dan Smith because I trust him. He's seen my I, whole body. I know, but I personally, if somebody came to me, I don't want to tattoo somebody's fucking. Dick. I just don't. I yeah. don't. You know, unless I mean? you're a close friend. I no? really no. What am I? What are you wrap it around your arm yeah. and then fucking yeah. and then like that's what so they do. Hold it tight and then, yeah, they wrap on, it on your wrist. I don't want to do that. Wait, like I'd rather not. Have, he exactly have your dick right. On his they, wrist? they pull it and they stretch it, wrap it around your wrist. Your dick. Yes. And they're like this. And they tattoo it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how they do it. Yeah, I figured that that's what they would do, but I don't know. What about know? a taint? Would you tattoo a taint? On a girl? Yeah, probably. <laughs> 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 I heard that shit hurts, man. Oh, I saw man. a video of a girl getting a butthole tattooed. Dude. It was gnarly, bro. It's on, it's on you can look it up. It's I, on YouTube? Yeah, I had brutal. a girl in Reno once when we were on tour, and we were in a bar, and somebody said, yeah, she has her asshole tattooed. And we were like, no, you don't. And of course, she was drunk. And she just pulled, bends over, pull, pulls her cheeks apart, and she has love stinks tattooed around her asshole. And wow. we were like... Wow, good for That's you, but wild, one. yeah, wild. <laughs> That's probably so painful. Man. Yeah, it has to be. It's crazy because if I see myself, when if I look at my body, I'll see some teeny spots down there. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm like I gotta fill those. It's not like the holy shit, dude, you're completely covered except for two spots. Like no, those two spots are like bothering you, your me. ass cheeks are covered? yeah, all that shit, everything, bro. It's no joke, man. I know a couple people like that. I it's think an, Little Wayne's like fully fucking one hundred percent covered yeah. too. Like I didn't know that. head to toe, everything. Wow! But Antoine he has Dixon. his whole face too. I yeah, think, he does. Yeah, I think Antoine Dixon too. Yeah, He's I like, don't know oh. if Antoine has his ass so, or maybe he. You never know. Who's that? That, dude, Who's that? that dude Who's would that? go in there and get like fucking twelve tattoos at uh, once. Skater. <laughs> oh, okay. He's yeah. fully tatted too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fully covered. Yeah. Nice you too. Not yeah, his man. face, but like full body mostly. Yeah, yeah. and he has, he has, that's a big meme is his ass cheeks. Oh, really? Okay. He, well, he who did, tattoos him? I don't know. He did some naked photo and you know how like that shit spread like wildfire. People yeah. are like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> people are like fucking making memes of him like floating in space. Just his ass cheeks. <laughs> 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 Do you have I think somebody, there's an actual, it's called like. Nyjah Houston's ass cheeks or some Instagram or oh, some Nyjah's butt cheeks or something like that. <laughs> wow. Do you have any daily rituals besides skating? No. Like wake up, I do mean, something every day, the same yoga or coffee or. Uh, I get in routines and then I blow them. Okay. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I I'm do that the, too. I'll, I'll, I'll get in like a routine where like app. for like, yeah, yeah, yeah. For like three months yeah. I'll wake up and I'll go to the gym and I'll. I'll do like uh, two, 300 push-ups and 600 sit-ups and all this. And then I'll take a holiday will come up or something like that. And all it takes is two or three days of not doing it. And the next thing I know, I'm like, shit, it's been like six months now. Since I've done <laughs> it's so true. Especially the holidays coming. It's yeah. like, I'm like, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a juice cleanse after Thanksgiving. or I'm going to start this after yeah. that. And then after that, you're like, you're like just, fucking. I have a really bad routine and it's, it's horrible. And I've been trying to get rid of it for years. And it's uh, wake up and within 10 minutes of being awake, I literally am outside smoking a cigarette mm. and it's, I, I feel like I can't wake up. I can't do anything. It's the first thing I can 
probably quit smoking cigarettes except for two of them the morning and then fucking right after dinner. Mm. But that morning one, if I don't, if I run out of cigarettes the night before and I don't realize that I run out of cigarettes, I can't do anything wow. until I have a cigarette that morning. Mm-hmm. Like I'll have to put on clothes, go to the store, buy cigarettes, come home, sit down, have my cigarette before I can even like shower, wow. use the restroom, do anything. Cause that's all that my mind will think about is just that first cigarette and coffee too. And now, yeah, uh, it's here and there. You know what I mean? Like that's is, like yeah. four days a week or something like that. How much is a pack of cigarettes now? Mine are 13. Holy shit. Are you smoking up American spirits? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Is that, the, is that the high, is that the high level? High? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. A, the bougie it's, cigarette? It's, it's the, it's the <laughs> singster cigarette. Yeah. The, 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 <laughs> it's the healthiest, the the healthiest one. Yeah, yeah. It's the healthiest non, uh, chemical really based yeah. one. But yeah, I, just they're straight, like, straight, uh, I didn't know that they're dumb expensive. So, and in Vegas, they're, only eight fifty, so I will have people, my friends, whenever they're going out to the Indian reservations. Or-